Welcome everyone to a new Sunday evening. Um, as usual, I'm trying to go live on multiple platforms. Um, so we're welcoming everyone. Last week, I thought I was going live. And I wasn't going live on Facebook. So today, I want to make sure that that doesn't happen. Um, that's what happens when you're multitasking. But nevertheless, I'm grateful to have everyone here today on this new Sunday evening that God has granted us this beautiful day. Um, we're at the end of October, the last day of the month, and it's such a blessing to just be alive. And I'm honored to God for all the all we've been through, right? Good and bad, but we got through it. That's the that's the beauty of everything. So I'm grateful to see everyone. If you guys are watching live with us, whether you're on Facebook um, or you decide to join us here, welcome. But if you're watching it afterwards, after the recording, we still welcome you. Um, just know that this is a Bible study, which means that we are um, we welcome everyone to ask questions, and that's the that's the whole um, um, principle of the meeting just so that we can get you to really dig deep into what God has already placed inside of you and just to help it come out. So we're just honored that you're here and we're hoping that the Holy Spirit um, that's trying to teach you and trying to get what's inside of you come out truly so that you can um, find God for yourself or know what was already placed in you and know more of the person who um, created you. Um, essentially so I'm just happy to have each and every one of you here if you want to join the zoom live the link will be in the description box click on over come on in and just let's have a conversation together if not leave your comment in the um, in the comment section or in the description um, well in the comment section and we'll get back to you guys um, afterwards so Thank you for being here. So we're going to get started on this um, glorious day and see what the what God has brought to our hearts or put on our hearts for today. Um, before we get started, we're going to pray first. And um, if anybody have a testimony, um, this is an opportunity for you to share. Praise God. <clears throat> I want to give God the glory for another day and for everyone who's there to give God glory for you and just to enjoy another Sunday. That's a blessing. I thank God for my grandfather who's the 91st year and still strong. Yes. And uh, uh, we can all hope to see 91. It's a blessing. And so I'm grateful that I still have my grandfather. I pass. My grandmother passed away a few years ago, but so to have that connection is, is a beautiful thing. More importantly for my children, to have that connection as as I was thinking of my great grandfather and that I can remember him and that imprint on me is important. And so yeah, I'm just grateful for that and celebrating his ninety first birthday yesterday and just pray that he continues to be healthy and I pray for everyone to have, enjoy life. Praise the Lord! 94, 90, 91? 91, yeah, 91. <laughs> well, we try and pain. <laughs> we love our pain and suffering, but 91, that's it. That's, 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 that's great. That's beautiful, yes. So, grateful for that. And, and to... to to think of an imprint that he's had on myself and my brothers he was he was the first person i called father because i didn't i was born in haiti and my parents were in america so i learned a lot of my as a matter of fact the biggest imprint he had on me is he used to have me sit on his lap to, wow. play, to play the accordion and that's where i remember my first um like memory of playing instruments was with him and he because I then I was the youngest. Jerry wasn't wasn't born yet, or Jerry was in America. 
So I always went with him. He's the pastor of our, of our church in Haiti. And whenever, the, every morning, they had like church every day is kind of how it feels like. And every every morning, because I was the baby, I went with my mother, my grandmother and grandfather everywhere. And they would take us to church. So I had a very, had a very large imprint on me. So I always remember that about him. And he was a strong, silent guy. And that's always been the concept that he still has that imprint. My grandfather doesn't speak much, but when he speaks, it's deep, you know, and and he's always leaves you with a depth. So, and I always, and yeah, I I think we all have that as a good example of, of a strong man of God. And so I'm grateful for him in any case and praise God for that. That's my testimony briefly. Yes, sir. That's that's really. I am very, I am very, I am very um happy for that testimony about your grandfather, which is supposed to be my grandfather also. Not my grandfather, my father, because ninety something. And uh, I like to hear when he speak. I I would like to hear when he talk. I, I, why don't you take him one day, come into Zoom, and he could give a talk? That would be very good for us. That would be very, very, very good. At least he's not going to go home um, with everything that he has in his mind. <laughs> that would be so good. Uh, entice him. Entice him to come to Zoom. Well, it will be... It would not be him doing Zoom. It would be who's in the house to help him put the stuff together. But that's why, and try to find somebody. Try to find somebody in the house because that would be. This is a blessing. I call that blessing. When you find old people, somebody old people like that talking, it's worth to listen to and pick up things from that person. Oh Lord, I don't know why I'm coming. <laughs> But I, I feel I feel it should be here to say something for us to get the blessing. You get the blessing for yourself and you don't want to share it. <laughs> I, I always share it. There's always a piece of my grandfather in me when I speak. <laughs> no. I want to hear it from the horse mouth. <laughs> Sorry, my sister, to take your time to talk like that. Let me leave your time to talk. Yeah, you're not taking my time. Yeah, that, that, this is beauty. This is 91 I'll years old. I'll see if I can make it work, make it happen. Yeah, 91 years old. You wait to listen to the people like this. I let you hear it. Hmm. That's the beauty. Yeah. Language barrier would be a struggle because he only speaks Creole. It doesn't matter because you could translate it. Yeah, I know. It's just we have to be over there to translate. It. If you can't, I oh boy, we have all the the tool. If you can't, Gladia could. If Gladia can't, I could. <laughs> all the tool is right there. We don't have we we have everything there. Hmm. Everything is there. Don't mind me, I'm having a little dinner a little late. I so do I. <laughs> but yeah, let us go, 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 get into the business. <laughs> yeah, so, um, yeah, 91 is really a fantastic age. I don't know if, if you had a testimony, Tina. We'll give you an opportunity to speak. If not, we'll just get in. Oh. Uh, no, ma'am. No, <laughs> 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 <Not only> ma'am. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah. So um, so we're just gonna pray and um, start.
Heavenly Father, we thank you for your love, your grace, and your mercy. We thank you for granting us your favor and allowing us to see another Sunday. Thank you for all those who have come together today, Lord God, who might have reached us last weekend to be able to come back to see you, Lord God. Yes. Thank you for giving us all these opportunities to be able to, to communicate with you, Lord God, even though we are not, circumstances have made it that we're not able to meet, but we're able to meet regardless of situations, Lord God. We thank you for giving us these opportunities. Thank you for another Sunday. We know, Lord Father God, many did not make it from Sunday to Sunday. No. Every day is a blessing. Lord God, so we thank you for that. But we know, Lord, it's not your will that any of us should perish, Lord God. So we understand, Lord Father God, that as some grieve, you grieve. But we know, Lord Father God, that these are just temporary because you have granted us everlasting light, Lord God. So we thank you for that. We ask, Lord God, as we continue with this service, Lord God, that you will keep us grounded in you, focused on you, seeking your truth and understanding. We ask that you forgive us for our weaknesses, forgive us for our struggles with ourselves, within ourselves, within our spirit. Lord yes. God, we know, Lord Father God, that it is not you do not judge us as who we are, but you judge no. us as who we are to be. And we know, Lord yes. Father God, that through you, you have given us the power to be like you. And we know, yes. Lord Father God, that your intention is for us to be like you forever. So we thank you for that grace and we thank you for that mercy. We ask that you continue to guide us, continue to teach us your way, and teach us, continue to teach us how to love. We honor yes. you, praise you, we magnify your holy name. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Um, before, before, you, before you speak, I would like to, I would like to, um, You hear me? Do you you hear me? Yes, we hear you. I would like you to pray for a uh, Maurice wife. Mm -hmm. Maurice is a friend of mine long ago. He passed away. He, he passed. He, he, he's with the Lord now. But his wife is taking it so hard and he's taking it too on her. So I'm asking we could pray for her to have a relief. Um, I mean, to have, you know, to have a relief of the pain that she um, had, that she is having right now. So pray for his wife for his wife to be comforted. Uh, I pray that already, but I know the Lord going to do it, but I am also put it before you guys that we could pray for her, that could, God could open the door for her to find relief in sadness and also in crying. Yeah, um, let's just bow our heads. Father God, we just want to come before you and first off, thank you for who you are and why we come to you because mm. in everything, for everything, with everything, by everything is through you. And mm. we know there's nothing that basically that you cannot do. And we come before you because you are the creator of all things. And mm. you're the one that can fix all situations. You understand the the makeup of everything, Lord Father mm. God. And this is why we come before you right now in this moment to pray for our pastor's um, good friend who has transitioned, who's passed on and his spirit has left the body. And now mm. we're dealing with the consequence or the results of it um, mm. with the people who are left behind, Lord God. And so we want to lift up his wife right now in your hands. For we know death is never an easy process to mm -hmm. accept, mm -hmm. Lord God. And um, sometimes with lack of understanding that mm -hmm. can bring upon fear, 
um, yeah. and can bring upon guilt and can bring upon yeah. many um, feelings that we just don't know how to yeah. Yeah. Um, comprehend or tolerate, yeah. Lord God. So yeah. Yeah. right now, wherever she is, we're calling onto your name to bring a spirit of peace and comfort yeah. Yes, that only Lord. you can provide, Lord Father God. Yes. Only you can make sense of, yes. of death, Lord Father God. Only you can make sense of transition. Only you can fill a hole yes. that is too big to be filled by anything yes. else, Lord yes. God. Yes. Yes. You're the ultimate comforter. You're the ultimate father. And she needs you more than ever. With this lack in her life, fill the void that is now in her life for her to see more of you um, and to be able to process as the days go on, Lord Father God. May your love abide in her, not only with her, but many that are facing the same tragedy in their life and not knowing how to deal with mm. the circumstance yes, Lord father Lord. god yes, Lord. so yes, we're Lord. just calling on to you to yes, do the Lord. things that yes. you're already naturally yes. good at doing is to yes, be Lord. in the in the positions when our back are against the wall and yes, we know that you are doing marvelous things in those very dark moments lord father god mm. so thank you for what you're about to do for what you're already doing we yes. love you we magnify your holy name. We pray not because we're worthy of anything, but we do pray in the precious name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. I just, in my heart, my spirit is asking that, to add to, ask Lord God, that you comfort all those who grieve, Father. Yes. To remind us, Lord God, that the pain is real, and God knows yes. that you understand yes. that even though we can't see the longer mm. picture. So we mm. grieve because of what we cannot see. Yes, and Lord. Know, Lord Father God, that these things happen again, not to your will, but because of mm. the way the world is. Lord, yes. We ask, Lord God, that you will send her strength. Yes. That we know that the pain won't go away, Lord God, but she can lift up out of the pain, Lord Father God. Yes, Lord. The love will never go away, but that she is remembered, reminded, Lord God, that it's temporary. Yes. Yes. You will, they will be together again. And yes. all of us who suffer and all of us who have lost, Lord God, that, mm. we, that we appreciate the love rather than saddened by the lost. Yes. That we hold on to the future, Lord God, yes. knowing that temporarily is a loss, but the future yes. is that we will all be together again. We thank yes. you for that truth. That holds yes. us up to understanding that no one has died. No, no one is gone. It's just temporary. Life yes. hasn't begun yet, so life no. hasn't ended yet. Amen. Thank you for yes, that. Sir. Thank you for yes. that understanding, Father God. We love you. We praise you. Yes. We honor you. We magnify your holy name. Amen. 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 So, um, once again, this week, I have been asked to bring the word today, and um, it was a, a challenge for sure, um, but I believe, I think the challenge was at first just trying to figure out what, um, what am I going to prepare for, but then now it was more about uh, what topic to choose because um, there were just so many different things that were coming to my heart and um, I was just trying to ask God like to basically speak to us in the moment in the moment and in, in the present where what we need to um, what he needs us to know and so uh, so let's just get into it um, so welcome, welcome, Sir Clearly. Let me change your name so they know who this is. Uh, okay. So um, I was wondering about, you know, a thought came to my mind and I started to think about famous people. 
like um, Oprah, Tyler Perry, you know, just ordinary people that rose up to fame and they um, they didn't just come up to fame just like that, you know? They had to go through a lot of processes and I, and I picked these two specific names amongst many others even people that are saying amongst us right now, you can you can probably relate to some extent. But when we look at somebody before our eyes who we've seen become um, um, grow in their fame um, on on television, we all get to witness what they go through. And these people tend to go through a whole lot of ridicule. There's a process for them when they finally become who they are. Um, and usually that can happen with the people who who believe they are close to that person or they know that person so um we often observe that when they were once a nobody um these people who would hang with them for example would you know probably think of them like an afterthought like you know, like if you know of somebody who just know you and from afar, they don't really take you as somebody important up until there's something that is starting to change with you that's starting to show that now you're important. But in that phase of your life, they didn't take that as something that was um, a gift or a privilege to be around. So I, um, I started to think that there's a convenience when you become famous because what happened is you get famous and now everybody wants to claim that they know you. And I started to wonder why is it at that moment that you want to claim to know somebody of high stature because obviously for the obvious reasons, you know, um, they have more money, they're more famous, they have power. So all of a sudden, everybody wants a piece of that pie. So, <laughs> and I started to think of these famous people, like if like if I said I'm, I met Tyler Perry, you know, like maybe one day I was hanging out with him, just random day, nothing important. I didn't think him as important or I, I never cultivated his dream. I never, but one day he became famous and then I, I just want to be invited to his home just to be invited to his home. Um, maybe I didn't even you know, look at him as anybody who, who has value too, you know, but all of a sudden now I'm like, I, right, he got, he has fame. He got money now. Maybe I should try to get mm -hmm. in. Maybe I should try to be invited by his house. I don't think the very first person that he is going to call is going to be me. And if I ever decided to go and try to even visit him, knowing that he probably only met me once or maybe twice, that it would be something enough for him to say, yeah, you're welcome into my home. Or even Oprah or anybody who I feel like, you know, I'm not inviting just about anybody into my home. It has to be somebody like I feel like I know. And if I'm inviting you into my home, maybe it's just for a specific purpose. But if it's just for hanging out, I'm calling my best friend. I'm calling somebody that has just been in my corner for a very long time. Who knows about me? Who knows me? Who knows me in my good times and my bad time? So if Tyler Perry were to ever see me at my door and he looked at me and I would to knock and be like, you know, can I come in? Can I come on over? He would like, the first thing he's gonna say, I don't know you. I don't know you. So that left me to this scary question in my head when god says these words to you <laughs> i never knew you <clears throat> and Terrible. i wonder <laughs> where did that start why 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 do i believe that i'm supposed to be entered into this person home I should feel safe enough to even have the audacity to ask that 
because maybe something in me already telling me that I do have a relationship, but apparently mm -hmm. I was far wrong. Far wrong. So that leads me to our um, verse for today. Um, the message is going to be in Matthew 7, verse 21 to 23. If you guys can read along with me, Matthew 7, verse 21 to 23. And it says, Not everyone that says unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven. But he that doeth the will of my Father, which is in heaven. Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name? And in thy name have cast out devils? And in thy name done many wonderful works? And then will I profess unto them, I never knew you. Depart from me, ye that work iniquity. Father God, we thank you for this moment. I ask that you fill this place with your Holy Spirit. And that everything that you're supposed to say, that you say it through me in this moment and you enlighten every soul and every spirit that may be a part of this message. We pray this in your glorious name, in Jesus. Amen. 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 So, which brings me to the title of my message today. I never Amen. knew you. Amen. My God. Amen. Um, it's easier for me to deal with somebody on earth to tell me they never knew me. Um, because for me, um, even though it would hurt and trust me, it hurts, um, to not be invited to something that you feel is the moment or the greatest experience or you felt like you once had access to this person and now they're very famous today and for you to feel like even though yeah he he i gave him a tissue or i i i was but i don't know you and and somebody like my as a just a regular person me saying that i don't know somebody is basically implying like you know we don't have that intimate relationship for you to be in that in that moment with me. And these are very private places, like your home, like this big moment, even signing you a check sometimes just because, not because it's an exchange for something else, but because I just I just feel like, you know, giving you something because you're my friend or whatever. I'm not gonna do this to a random person. So I started to think of the thought process when it comes to us on a day to day, how we think about why we think that we wouldn't want somebody to be invited into our home. Why we would think that after we became famous or became in a, in a very profound stature in your life that in this moment I realized um, this person was not a part of that growth process with me. I can differentiate who is important or who's been there or who knows me like that in comparison to somebody who's just been, you know, just around or an acquaintance. And we're going to go a little bit deeper about it, but I want you guys to keep that as a thought in the back of your mind to really understand um, just a very, you know, I'm not saying it's a, it's a deep, um, a deep thought, but rather just having an overall idea of the thought process when God is saying, I never knew you. And when he's saying, I never knew you, when he says those words, those four scary words, he also says, depart from me. Mm -hmm. um, and when I read that sentence, it just struck, stricken fear into me. It made me feel like this is actually the end. This is actually the moment when you're like, I really messed up. It's ended. Your life yeah. is ended. It's, this is, this is, this is it. This is no, I have a second chance. This is no, let me do it over. This is not, 
you know, what can I do so I can get in? This is not the moment that you're able to undo or even try to fix what you did wrong. This is the moment when you realize there is no, there is no future for me from here. When I look at, if somebody tell me they never knew me in this life, the hope is I have another opportunity to prove myself. Yes. The hope yes. is I can probably go on and be like, you know what, I, I wasn't there like I was supposed to and start showing up in the right way to start making that happen. But when these words are, when we sit here today in this, in this current present of life right now, when I'm looking at all around us and how we're living and I realize, hey, I'm alive. And I am living by a grace that I could be taken for granted. Because this moment, this time when you're hearing God telling you, I never knew you, we have to go back to where I used to be and what was happening and where, how come I've allowed this to happen that the very person that I believe should be saving my soul is now telling me he doesn't know me and where did this, how did this happen and where did it begin? So this is a thought process that I'm having for you. Before we get there, and I believe this is a warning for all of us, before you get to that moment, before you get to that situation, I believe God is asking us to take a step back and actually realize where are you right now in this moment so you can prevent those four words from being stated to you when we look at the same verse that we were reading in matthew 7 verse 21 to 23 one of the things that really stood out to me because they didn't say any other thing but the very thing that should imply that you will get in or you have access to this person and there should be no reason why that those words are said to me. Verse 22, it says, many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name? And in thy name have cast out devils? And in thy name done many wonderful works. They, I mean, I don't know about you. That'd be like, okay, yeah. You are actually doing exactly what I called you to do. And that is a sign that you are following God. Am I wrong? That, that is a sign. The, according to the word, this is okay. the standard. Absolutely. You meet the standard, you're supposed to go in. That's the, that's the standard. <laughs> oh, oh, God. For me, it is mind boggling because these people are not saying things that they don't know to be true. And God is not denying that they did not do this. No. no. He didn't deny that they didn't cast out devil he didn't deny that they didn't he's actually saying yeah you did you prophesied in my name you did wonderful works here on earth but i i don't know you and that is something that can strike a contradiction or a like so what what was i doing the whole time if i was not if you don't know me what was i how was I serving you? How, what, what else did I need to do to prove that my, that I had an actual relationship with the creator? And here I'm like, I need to now bridge the gap to this question, to the question of, all right, Lord, um, before you ever say those words to me and while i'm sitting here thinking that i am doing your work because 
I'm doing your work. I believe I'm doing your work. I see that these are the quote unquote, the fruit, which we're going to get a little deeper into that. I see that there's something happening, but where is the gap? What part are we missing in this moment that needs to bridge the prophesying and the, and the depart from or, or the relationship that we need together? I need to know how to know God and to still be prophesying. Or am I asking the wrong question? Is the prophesying the actual purpose? Is it that I need to know these things first? Is it something that I need to do before? I know you, or is it that I should know you and all these things to come? So we're going to get, <laughs> we're going to get, um, a little bit, um, deeper than that. I don't know if anybody have any questions yet, feel free to ask it in this moment, but we're going to, we're going to well, take a deep dive. The only, thing, the only thing I could say, I would go back to the first answer you gave. When you come into, um, oh Lord, thank you, Jesus. When you come in, and it is a privilege to speak on behalf of the Lord. Anytime you get a chance, it's not a force, it's a privilege. Yes. <laughs> yes. it's so go on my sister to that message go on amen um i said earlier that um we are living in the present moment where we have a chance to do the things we're supposed to do right so that we prevent these words from being stated to us um and when i heard the word depart from me and i started to compare to where the grace that he has given to me now because here's here's what happens when he says i never knew you depart from me here's what here's what ends in that moment not only does your future and there's no continuation but the grace that used to be available to you wow. is no longer there there's no longer mercy there's no longer grace there's no longer an opportunity to make it right. You just can't do it. Right now, where I'm living, I'm alive and I'm well, by the grace of God, my husband, we're all, we're all alive today. The, what I have right now is what we call grace and mercy. In other words, in this moment, I can be forgiven in this moment i can call on his name and he will answer me i can be saved i can be healed but more importantly i can be welcome into his house the way i am right now this is the moment that i believe we are living in presently as you are alive you are well you have the capability to figure out what is wrong in in your life and make amendments now and be and for him to give you that grace and be like i hear you and i'm gonna honor it but when i heard the depart from me in heaven Here's what was taken away. Here's the contrast of being here and having this opportunity and taking everything I can and hoping that what I have is going to take me all the way to the kingdom of God. Here's what gets lost. 
when depart from me is said to you in that, that moment. This is a rejection. He's basically he can't forgive you. And he won't forgive you. You cannot call on his name. You're no longer able to be saved. And worst of all, you're not welcome into his house. So, wow. So, how do we, how do we keep ourselves from getting there? What are we missing? Because I used to once believe that if you're prophesying, if I see somebody prophesying and doing the beautiful works of God, I automatically know you have a place in the kingdom of God. Simple. I, I wouldn't even dare to think that you are doing anything other than the work of God. devil gives people gifts too and you can be praying for god while being a servant of the devil it's not impossible it's very likely very common to be a preacher while being an agent of the devil i've met many so i would not disagree i would not that's not something i would find weird um i think many churches operate with that spirit of preaching the word of God while actually preaching, working for, against God. I think a lot of, of religions, as a matter of fact, you can see it happening in today where you can have people who call themselves religious, right? Who are literally promoting the devil. Literally. So I think that's not, that's not hard to see actually. It's very, very common if you think about it. Because they're not doing the work for God, even though the people who are serving them believe that they're learning from God. But what they're doing is they're connect, they're disconnect, they take, they're stealing those ser the people, and using the scripture to lead them away from God. So they who have ability to prophesy, they who have ability to heal, they not so much the the believers, but they who have been using the gift that God or Lucifer gives them for the work of, en of the enemy. Yeah. Hmm. Um, I would, I, I would, uh, um, give me the text again. Is Matthew? 20, yeah. Matthew seven twenty one. Matthew seven twenty one. There is something you read here. I would like to say one twenty one. Um, I want to go back to the analogy that you give me and i want to go back to another verse which ended in the passage the question you ask that's i want you to to repeat the question again i would like you to repeat your question what did i do i, I think you say what did i do how what, how, what i have to do to get in. Am, am, am I right? That's correct. What, what I have to do to get in. Number one, the analogy you give you. you what, give, what, what do I have to do to, to know him? Because to know him. the words was, I never knew you. So, That's right. So if he never know me, so some there's a disconnect from. There's a disconnect. So right. what I have to do to do that. Right. So um, he can know me. That's right. That's right. I will go back to the analogy that you give me, which is so accurate. The analogy is that the person is when the person famous. That's the time you know the person. Mm. While the person was a struggle, you did not know the person. Right. But when he famous, that's the time you know him. Now, how do we know the person when he struggle? Right. Right. How do we know the person when that person is struggle? And, and, and then when the person is famous, that's the time you want to come on to his house. Mm. 
for what reason we want to come to his house? Is it, to me, I saw a selfish reason here. Mm. I saw a selfish reason. Just, I want to be connected to that person in order for me to be what I probably, I would never be. Mm -hmm. so, Hello. Go ahead. I have one question. Who's that? Tell or said, I never knew you, God? Yes. yes. Okay. Uh, God have a condition, condition for all, all son or all daughter. Mm -hmm. If your daughter God or you, you son God, your father have a condition. Yes. Uh, have um, I never remember what this the ten ladies fall uh ten ladies five a good thing five don't have good thing five don't have good thing uh the lip don't have the oil five they the lip the good things have uh they left full oil they have one apples yes apple for coming yes uh when time almost come in uh -huh. finally don't have uh, the lady don't have a good sense yep uh they left not really they left not full the oil mm -hmm. uh they not good sense come in to the door knocking the door Hello, my lips don't have uh, oil. Can you give me some? Mm -mm. They good thing hand share there? No, I can't give you because they, uh, I have a low. It's not enough for I give you. You're supposed to go buy some. Yeah. Why low they come in, go, they go to, fight, to buy the oil. They poke off. They knock in the door. The door closed. They cannot en uh, enter inside the uh, house because it's lit. They let every son or every daughter, you supposed to uh, available for your father. Anytime father come in, you ready for that. Amen. Yes. But me, I understand from what my um, sister Gladia good uh uh this story this is very very good history uh, this story uh make every daughter or every son you're supposed to uh to available anytime your father come in you go and try to do your father amen okay amen. i'm finished <laughs> i have a question i have a question in that um the oil, what is the oil? The oil for lamp. The what, what is the oil? The, what the oil is? Oil? The oil that is on the lamp. What it is? The lamp, you should buy the, the oil. It's, one lamp don't have oil. It's not on. You're yeah, supposed to have oil, the gas. Yes, I know, but what is the oil? Maybe Gladia could come up with this. What it's is the uh, Holy Spirit. What, what is the oil? She said it. See, what, what, Holy what? Spirit. Oh, Holy Spirit. Amen. Yes, it's true. It's true. It's true. It's true. It's true. Mm -hmm. But before you get the oil, uh, which is the Holy Spirit indeed. Um, Amen. Look, Amen. Look, read, read, verse yes. read verse 21. Read verse 21. Look. No, Matthew. Matthew, in, in, in the text we are. No. Matthew 7, verse 21. 21. Read the text. Read that part of that verse there.
and the question to be asked in that same verse. Matthew 7, verse 21. Uh, my language and Creole. No, keep reading, reading. We will change it. We will, we will translate it. Matthew seven twenty one. Uh huh. I see that. Maybe glad you could come up with because Matthew seven will give you another answer right there again. It says Matthew seven verse twenty one says, "Not everyone that says unto me, Lord, Lord, mm -hmm. shall enter mm -hmm. into the kingdom of heaven, but he that doeth the will of my Father which is in heaven." That's that, 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 that's the book of the matter right there. What is the will of the Father? So you know, I think you said clearly first because. You took the exact verse that I, I took it out of my sermon um, mm -hmm. because it was going to make my sermon longer. <laughs> oh, <laughs> but because you brought, you brought it is because I know God is saying he wants us to talk about it. Um, when I think about the the, the 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 ten people and then five of them had the oil and five of them didn't have it, it's a very uh -huh. profound story because yeah. it makes you understand yeah. it makes you understand where God wants you to be and how He wants you to prepare for this day uh -huh. when it comes. Uh -huh. but, pastor, uh -huh. but but Pastor asked a really deep question and he said how do you do the will of the father so but here's i don't think we're asking the right question here's Go ahead. here's why we're not asking the right question because the will of the father is for you to prophesy is that not correct mm -hmm. yes no to yes that, no i don't think it's excluded from his will no it's not that's why i, I say yes so, so, so the question is not really doing the will because I, they're very well doing the will of the That's right, that's right, that's right, that's right. That's so, question. My question, working with you, you said you should be valuable. The, the, he tell you, he will tell you, he never know you because well, you're not ready. I know, but he, he said he will never know you but mm -hmm. he gave us the answer in verse 21. Mm -hmm. What yes. you should do he to said, get to the heaven. That's correct. You know what you should do for him to know you. Right. For him to know you, you have to do the will of the Father. But now the question we may now, what is the will of the Father? Right. Then you come up with prophesy which is part of the will but that's not the core that's not the, the main core of the will in other words this is a shadow mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That, uh, to, to do the prophecy is a shadow to do the work is a shadow but that's not what give you access to him correct correct so <laughs> so so, so I read the verse and I said, I'm doing the will of the father. So I'm supposed to be in heaven in this moment because I've been prophesying. I've been taking demons out of people. Let me in. Let right. me in. There is no reason why I should not be inside the kingdom. But That's what right. is the we're again we're asking the wrong question because the will although it looks clear it is not clear to many of us because we are doing the things that are of the surface and not of what requires an actual relationship with god and guess what and guess what 
that wasn't even enough to get you into the kingdom of God. Um, All the things that you have done is not enough to get you into the kingdom of God. So what do I have to do? What kind of relationship do I have to build in order for me now, when I come to the door and I'm getting ready to get in, what will be required of me? What kind of relationship? What kind of no-no? You know, I know Tina is on the call. That's my best friend right there. She's somebody I will talk to about everything, right? We hardly, you know, we don't have to be around each other all the time. But once we're around, I could, I can almost think what she thinks and she could think exactly what I think. That is a relationship. That is a friendship. That is, she know me, I know her. So if I come to my best friend's door and I knock on her door, is she going to let me in or is she going to tell me, I don't know you? Actually, actually, Tina is not your best friend. In other words, Christ is not your best friend. It's a fake. Because the will have to be find out um, um look the place where it is in the book of john when they ask christ what kind of work for me to do to get into heaven what was the work christ tell them to do in the book of john Do you remember the? Do you, Go ahead. Do you remember the chapter? That's what I'm looking for. See, it's in the book of John. When the men who were asking what he needs to do, the rich guy, the rich man. Yeah, what? No, not that the rich man. The other, another. That's the Pharisees and all the people asking what work to do in the book of John. I'm looking for that verse because. Um, uh, to prophesize and um, also to cast out devil. This is work. This is this is part of the job. Okay. However, so you're basically what you're doing. You're jumping ahead of my sermon. Okay. So John, is, <laughs> I already have the scripture. Is John seven <laughs> verse one to thirty nine. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's going to be John 7 verse 1 to 39 and because this is the very question I think we're all going to start contemplating is basically what is the will of the father and how do I not how do I not confuse it with the works but rather an actual relationship and I know I understood what you mean pastor when you said it's like me and my best friend it's not that but this is the closest we can understand how to know that you have an actual relationship with the person now here's what here's what i want you to understand it's not about what i think i'm having a relationship no. with my friend no. Right? No. it's about the person who feels that they have an actual relationship with me so when I look at Tina, she has a principle, she has a list of conditions that will confirm that she and I are best friends. Uh -huh. Same that we have to look at God because he has his principles and conditions that will now confirm you are his child or you are doing his will or that he knows you so that's the perspective we need to get in it's not about what i think i'm doing right that requires because no. i want to be in so i have to do what you're asking me what are the list of conditions what are the things that i have to put into into practice put into my mind and 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 change so we're not gonna get like further into it let the word speak for itself so i had the john 7 already written down verse 1 through 39 anybody can read it um john 7, john 7 verse 1 through 39 
If anybody has it, they can read it. After this thing, Jesus walked in Galilee, right? Yeah. Am I right? Yes. For he would not walk in Judea, because the Jew sought to kill him. Now the Jew feast of the tabernacle was at hand. Brethren therefore said unto him, Depart hence and go into Jude, to, to Judea, that the disciple also may see the work that thou dost. For there is no man that does anything in secret. And he himself seek to be known openly. If thou do these things, show thyself to the world. For neither did his brethren believe in him. Okay. Mark that verse. Mark that verse. Yes, yes, yes. I, I want to read it. Verse. Pastor, <laughs> hold on. Let me let me read it in the other translation because I like your translation, but I, I also want to read it again because okay, that verse is very important. Um, yeah. After this, Jesus traveled around Galilee. He wanted to stay out of Judea where the Jewish leaders were plotting his death. Oh, that's better. <laughs> but soon it was time for the Jewish festival of shelters and Jesus's brothers said to him, Leave here and go to Judea, where your mm -hmm. followers can see your miracles. Mm -hmm. You can't become famous if you hide like this. Mm -hmm. If That's you right. can do such wonderful things, mm -hmm. show yourself to the world. Mm -hmm. For even his brothers didn't believe in him. Keep going. Keep reading. Verse 6. Jesus replied, now is not the time for me to go, but you go anytime. The mm. world can't hate you, but it mm -hmm. does hate me because mm -hmm. I accuse it of doing evil. Mm -hmm. You go on. I'm not going to this festival because my time has not yet come. After th saying these things, Jesus remained in Galilee. But after his brothers left for the for the festival, Jesus also went. Jesus also went, though secretly, staying out of public view. The Jewish leaders tried to find him at the festival and kept asking if anyone had seen him. There was a lot of grumbling about him among the crowds. Some argued he's a good man, but others said mm -hmm. he's mm -hmm. nothing but a fraud who deceives the people. But no one had the courage to speak favorably about him in public, for they were afraid of getting in trouble with the Jewish leaders. Then midway through the festival, Jesus went up to the temple and began to teach. The people were surprised when they heard him. How does he know so much when he hasn't been trained, they asked. So Jesus told them, my message is not my own. It comes from God who sent me. Anyone who wants to do the will of God will know whether my teaching is from God or mm -hmm. is merely my own. Mm -hmm. Those who speak for themselves want glory only for themselves. Mm -hmm. But a person who seeks to honor the one who sent him speaks oh. truth, not lies. Not lies. Moses gave you the law, but none of you obeys it. In not fact, right. you are trying to kill me. Hmm. The crowd replied, you're demon possessed. Who's trying to kill you? Jesus replied, I did one miracle on the Sabbath and you were amazed. Hmm. But you work on the Sabbath too when you obey Moses's law of circumcision. Actually, this tradition of circumcision began with the patriarchs long before the law of Moses. Mm -hmm. For if the correct time for circumcising your son falls on the Sabbath, you go ahead and do it so as to not break the law of Moses. 
So why should you be angry with me for healing a man on the Sabbath? Look beneath the surface so you hmm. can judge correctly. Right. Some of the people who lived in Jerusalem started to ask each other, isn't this man they are trying to kill? Isn't this the man they are trying to kill? But here he is speaking in public and they say nothing to him. Could our leaders possibly believe that he is the Messiah? But how could he be? For we know where this man comes from. When the Messiah comes, he will simply appear. No one will know where he comes from. While Jesus was teaching in the temple, he called out, Yes, you know me, and you know where I come from. But I'm not here on my own. The one who sent me is true, and you don't know him. But I know him, because I come from him, and he sent me to you. Then the leaders tried to arrest him, but no one laid a hand on him, because his time has not yet come. Many among the crowds at the temple believed in him. After all, they said, would you expect the Messiah to do more miraculous signs than this man has done? When the Pharisees heard that the crowds were whispering such things, they and the leading priests sent temple guards to arrest Jesus. But Jesus told them, I will be with you only a little longer. Then I will return to the one who sent me. <laughs> you will search me. You will search for me, but not find me. And you not and you cannot go where I am going. The Jewish leaders were puzzled by this statement. Where is he planning to go? They asked. Is he thinking of leaving the country and going to the Jews and other lands? Maybe he will even teach the Greeks. What does he mean when he says, You will search me but not find me, and you cannot go where I am going? On the last day, the climax of the festival. Jesus stood and shouted to the crowds, anyone who is thirsty may come to me. Anyone who believes in me may come and drink. For the scriptures declare rivers of living water will flow from his heart. When he said living water, he was speaking of the spirit who will be given to everyone believing in him. But the spirit had not yet been given because Jesus had not yet into enter into his glory. Um, 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 sister Clearly, um, mm. Sister Clearly, come up with the Holy Spirit. Amen. Come up before you receive the Holy Spirit. You have to believe Him. Amen. It's through Him then you will receive the the, the oil of the Lamb. Yes. Uh, through Him. You must believe that he, he is the one who been sent. Amen. You have Amen. To his word. You have to believe what he's telling you, not what you want to know, or not the miracle, not the prophesies. Not you have to believe that Yeshua is the one that the Father sent to redeem us from all evil. Amen. Um, this chapter was supposed to be a little bit further down my message because it has <laughs> so much in that one passage that we could break down and really analyze what God is asking of us. Because Jesus had the opportunity to walk here on earth and to prove himself and to prove God, really, and to prove a real actual relationship. We have to first go just a little bit backwards because I want you guys to, I think we focus more on what we should do and not realize the things that we do that are not necessarily important. And when you're able to, not, not to say it's not important, but I think, I think the order that we're doing it is incorrect. And we need to reestablish why the order has to be the way it needs to be in order for us to be in his will. The question okay. that was in me for a while, it kept saying, um, is it about the fruit or the relationship with God? Of course, we're trying to figure out 
Of course, we realize right. now that is the relationship that we have that is much more important. But I also was thinking about the fruit because the fruit is all about um, um, when you do work, you get the result of it, right? So if I am casting out demons, that means I'm doing the work and the results are actually happening. So that means I'm actually doing the fruit or the fruit that I believe I'm supposed to bear, I'm actually bearing it. So for me, it's like saying, okay, the, so that should just be important. So I was like, if that's not important then, if, that, if the fruits is not so much what God wanna see first, why is it that he didn't let me enter into the kingdom? How can I compare it to something else that may be doing the same exact thing I'm doing and we all ended up in the same place? So I started to think about the devil himself and I think Ricardo had already started talking about that. And we realized the very person that can also be a part of the plan of God is the devil himself. <laughs> because if you're going to get rid of somebody, if somebody is useless, I think it's enough for you to just get rid of them, right? Easy. I don't think you should allow them to stay for as long as he's been staying and thriving to, to do what he's doing. I should just feel like if I'm God, if I'm if I'm God, he could just be like, you know what, enough of this, get rid of him. But I don't believe that God does get rid of things for any reason, right? I believe he does everything for a purpose. There is a time for everything. But, excuse me, at the same time, he, <laughs> the devil himself, is part of the plan as well. So in other words, when I say he's part of the plan, when I say he's part of the plan, and I think Ricardo has said it, can the devil not do miracles also? Yes. Um, however, I would inject devil. I would inject devil, but I would refrain from injecting devil. I, I would inject devil, you know, but I am refrained from that. Why? You may ask me. Why? Because of our selfishness. We, I would go back to Ricardo again. Um, when Ricardo said before, a long time ago, we are a little devil. We have a sense of selfishness in us that we want to be famous but famous for who? Hmm. For ourselves is a self-proclamation looking for ourselves. Is the same thing happen with the analogy you give? That analogy is a profound analogy. While the person was not famous, I have nothing to do with it. But now the person is famous because I want a piece of the pie. I want a piece of the pie. Not God want a piece of the pie. Right, right. So because I want a piece of the pie, I inject myself, I push myself to the person. Amen. Amen. But the person know better than that. Right. He kick you out. Oh, God, I bless you. You said it right there, and I think it brought me to my next point. Deception. 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 It's deception. That's it. Right like there. Um. We know that the the father of deception is the devil. Yes. Yes. But I want you guys to like stay with me because. I want you to understand the word deception. Deception often is 
described, and I think I got the def definition, it's the act of making someone believe something mm -hmm. that is not true. It's not true. Uh, the act of deceiving, yeah. right. The act of deceiving someone, right? So the word deception almost make it look like you're doing it onto someone else. But, but, I, but I want you to focus on you deceiving yourself within yourself. You see, but you come up here, this is a, a open eyes. Right. This, this is a disguise right now. Right. Who we really are. Right. Who we really are. Right. In other words, you let the cat out of the bag. Right. That's what happened right now. The cat out of the bag. Right. In other words, God now open us and make us see how deceptionist we are, Amen. how deceived we are, Amen. how evil we are. Amen. And that's why today, I'm sorry my sister, you could turn me on. That's why today, we have a check pack of people because the pastor is famous and he's making a lot of money. Right. And not only that, he's telling the people things that the people want to know. Right. Telling things that will make people feel good, but not things that will make people go boom and think exactly what is going on. We keep on preaching, 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 but we keep on killing each other often, even at the church where we are. We become hypocrite to each other. Yeah. If one brother says something that is not supposed to be said, I cut him off. There is no sense of forgiveness. There is no really sense of real intimacy of love. And this is what Christ is all about. Amen. Amen. So, our, the title of the message is, I Never Knew You. Never knew you. It stands to understand that in this moment of deception, when I'm telling you that instead of looking at somebody deceiving you, let's look at you deceiving yourself to think that you knew someone or you believe someone knew you in turn. So in all the texts that we have been reading, we have been talking about things that are of the external factors of life. Everything that has to do with what you can show. As Make over. Right. Everything Make that over. is on the surface, things that you could just be like, I did this, 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 and that's enough for me to get in. And if you guys know who God is, he is more interested in what's inside than what he sees on the outside. These are two different areas in your life that needs to work together. Now, if I work externally, if I do work on the external, Obviously, I can't do the work. I'm not doing the work internal. Obviously, this is not enough to get in. I am so busy. Right. I am so busy doing the thing external. Right. I am famous, you know. Right. I am very famous. Go back to that passage again. Before you leave that, we're going to turn back to the passage about Christ when he was teaching his own brother, <laughs> his very own brother, tell him to go in public. Yep. To show himself to the world. Show himself. Yep. That he might be famous. Right. Right. That is, that is the word. That's. But he didn't do that. That's it. He don't want to be seen. 
He don't want to be seen because he was not him. I, as I said, I am, I am a male man. You understand? I am just a male man. I am nothing but a male man. The person who wrote the letter is that person you have to focus on, which is Christ. Yeshua said, he is just a male man. The father will. That's what is important. Amen. And what is the father will? That you believe. You know what Christ is saying is the truth. Amen. So we're gonna we're gonna try to speed up into this a little bit. So we talked about don't speed it up. <laughs> don't speed it up. You have, you have a lot of good things there to come out. It's a lot. Use it's all a the lot. It's a lot. Um so I started to wonder um about the deceiving part because when we think about the devil he's also the deceiver but here i am standing like the devil himself deceiving myself because <laughs> because here i am doing the will of god quote unquote and i have the biggest deception in my life that is before everyone before god himself where he tells me in these words again i never knew you and the the place that he will send me along with the actual deceiver the father of all deceiver it says in revelation 20 verse 10 it says then the devil who had deceived them was thrown into the fiery lake of burning sulfur joining the beast and the false prophet there they will be tormented day and night forever and ever so here I am who was quote unquote doing the will of God and this is the place that I am about to go to. This is the place that I am ending in. This is the place that I thought I would not be in because I was doing the quote unquote the will of God. How many of us are sitting here doing the will of God that we thought was on the external that we thought was just okay maybe if i preach the word of god or maybe if i go give this food or maybe if i just prophesy maybe if i just rebuke the devil maybe if i do these things that will prove to the people because first who are you trying to prove it to because when we are talking about because we're, we're gonna get into this when we are talking about the external factors there's first you need people to confirm that you are doing the will of God first. Because you will continue in that act because you already have been ordained by the world that that must be the will of God. That must be somebody who's doing what God is calling them to do. And very well so, you are doing part of his will. But then you're missing a very important part to actually be ordained by, by not the world, but by God himself. I think the visual, if you have to put it in a perspective, is not necessarily somebody who is lost in his vision of God, somebody who is using the idealism of being a servant of God for their own self. And that part is what is, um, that is significant. Uh, significant. That is the perfect example of a agent of Lucifer. We're talking about the word is narcissism. Mm. There are many people who are narcissists who become leaders, not because of the love of God, but the love of self and grandizing. So you can see somebody who wants to you to see them as a great servant. You can see somebody who helps the poor because they want to be seen as helping the poor. They may be doing good works, but it's not because they care about the people 
They care about being noticed for doing good work. So the feet, the love or the respect that they get is what they're looking for, not for the glory of God. I think that's the word right there, the missing part. Mm -hmm. Is are you doing it for the glory of God? Are you doing it for love? Or are you doing it for self aggrandizement? There are many philanthropical people who do it philanthropy because they're famous for it. You know what I mean? Because they're they're respected for it. But even if they think they're doing a good thing, that's why Christ says anyone who wants to give charity, give it in secret. Right. Because if you truly, <laughs> you truly care, you don't care who you do, right? So why do you, why do you need people to see you do it? Because right. you're not really doing it for the poor; you're doing it for yourself. Right. So that that's what Christ is really working on. There's two parts to it. There's one is the false prophet. That's a in the, earlier in the chapter it speaks of the false prophets. Right, who come across looking like they're serving God. That's one part. But the other part is in your spirit. That you may be well do you may be in the same sense, well, good example is Judas was a disciple. Right? He was one of Christ's disciples. Who has who's probably been given the gifts as well, right? But his heart is not in the thought of doing for God. His heart is in himself. His heart has nothing to do with God serving God. Even though he is a servant of God, his heart is on self. He has a revenge in his heart. He has a hatred for the for the Pharisees. He has a hatred for the Romans. And so that's very common. So when they say I I know when Christ says I know not of you or I know you not. He's and he says, and remember Christ, I'm a good example again is Judas where he says even amongst us is the devil. And none of the disciples knew what he was talking about. Christ already knew who the devil was. He was saying he already knew that amongst us, one of you is the devil. One of you will betray me. You know what I mean? It's that concept of understanding that God knows who you are, even though if you don't know who you are. Judas didn't know who he was. I appreciate when you say that, the deception of yourself. Judas deceived himself. God does not get deceived by you. You may think you're serving God even though you're, you're serving yourself. And when the time comes, you left this world in your deception. You will be proven of your deception, unfortunately. So the, the, what God, Christ is, 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 is um, teaching us is to be aware of the ability to think you're serving God just by doing things. And think that's enough, and that's all it takes. That you may even be doing God's work and think that's enough. But God knows you. God knows your heart. And you know who you really serve. Even if you don't serve Lucifer, you're serving Lucifer by serving yourself. Yeah. <laughs> um, um, remember, even though it has been said that man will stick to himself in doing things that is wrong because from the beginning they have been doing that anyway we understand that when Yeshua came two thousand years ago and more we are preaching god's word jesus christ said and that kind of teaching is not only belong to the people that is low class, so-called, but to the people that are in the high places. Now I am talking about the people that have a PhD, the people that have a MD, the people that are senators, that are president, all these people know about Jesus Christ, about God, and in fact, today we call America a Christian nation. From then, 
we are using the name to destroy other country we are using the name to destroy each other among us does christ really talk about those things christ talk about loving each other caring for each other concern about each other and not only for my country to be excel but other country to be excel in other words christ is taking that the whole world become one the whole world where they speak english where they speak creole where they speak is spanish where they speak portuguese where they speak french whether you speak uh, uh, Japanese, whether you speak Chinese, whether you speak whatever the dialect you preach or you teach, Christ wants us to be one. Is that happen today? In fact, today we find ourselves in the dismay. Why? Because we are preaching selfishness what I am, what I could become. Just like the, just like the, 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 the analogy my sister gave before. When I, I am famous, now you want a piece of the pie. But you are the soul of the world. You are the soul of the world. If you come with Christ from the, this is what happened to Constantine. Constantine did the same thing with Roman Empire. When Constantine is going out, out of the power of military power, when Rome is about to go, down, sorry to go there, going down, down the beat, Constantine take Christianity and make it become an empire. Right now, we say Rome is the only way to Vatican. Vatican, which is right there, the Pope, who is supposed to be an example to bring the world together, both spiritually and materially, to bring the world in one peace that all the world may live in unity and love to each other. In fact, Rome is not doing that. The Pope is not doing that. We give them food to people. We bring, we, we make a miracle to people. We do that. Just as my sister already said, we heal the sick. Yes, we do that. But do we understand that God wants us to love each other, not to kill, not to have war anymore? not to destroy each other with chemical weapon anymore, not to pay money to go to Mars, yet we have our brethren right now going in the garbage to pick up food. This thing has to be addressed. What my sister said, Jesus is going to say, I don't know you. Because you won't do it for selfish reason deception in other words exactly what you say it's better that you don't do it than to do it <laughs> you might as well not have done it because doing it didn't bring you anywhere and not doing it may have saved you because you would have focused on something more important than that or trying to show yourself rather i think when we when we finally understand the word deception and we take accountability for where we are right now in our lives and all of us been there all of us face this deception within ourselves thinking we knew something and then only to know better as we as we wisen up in the spirit of god the more we see and i think that's the that's the part that solomon was talking about and he's like the one of the wisest person and it's like the more he knew, the more he realized he was further away from the truth. It's almost like 
you're being awakened slowly to the things that you thought were good things and it only turning out to be lies or illusions of what I believe to be the truth of self. And I believe what God is wanting us to first do is, is first acknowledge that, all right, I'm just, I may be deceiving myself or I am deceiving myself and I need to acknowledge that that's the very first step you need to first acknowledge within yourself. Then from there, because we know that the God, God wants us to do his will so that we can enter his kingdom so that he can know us rather than us just know him, right? I can know about his ways. I can know about the things how to do it but if i don't if he doesn't know me in that intimate level then once again we have missed the mark and now you're subject to hell you're subject to eternal damnation you're subject to those four words i never knew you and i want you to not end there so when we read john 7 verse 1 to 39 there were so many verses that stood out to me and i want y'all to just follow along with me in verse 18, um, sorry, let me just grab my Bible. Uh, John 7, verse 1 to 39, but we're going to be, we're going to be on verse 18. Hmm? John 7, verse 18. Go ahead. Whoever speaks on their own. Can you read the NLT version? Go ahead. To the NLT version. Um, okay. Whoever speaks on their own does so to gain personal glory. But he who speaks the glory of the of the one who sent him is a man of truth. There is nothing okay. false about him. Okay. okay. That's right. Those who speak for themselves want glory only for themselves. But a person right. who speaks to honor the one who sent him speaks truth and not lies. In verse 18, it already shows you exactly what we've been reinforcing over and over again. Doing something for your glory. Doing something deceptively, like Ricardo was saying, if you're giving to the poor... You know, why does everybody have to see when God wants you to give in secret, right? So these are things that start to help you acknowledge that, okay, this is not anybody speaking here, by the way. I want you to understand this is Christ's word from his own mouth, from the source, from the source of what you need to know in order to start being in the will of God. So that means he is putting out that there are many people out here that are actually speaking for themselves for their own glory. So you need to start acknowledging where am I in that part of life? Where am I seeking my own glory rather than the glory of God? So you step back from there. In verse 22. Sister... Sister, sister, clearly keep keep the phone. Don't touch the phone. Okay, that's it. Don't touch the phone. Okay, I muted her. Okay. No, but don't need her. Don't she she cover the the screen? Yeah, she can unmute. I uh, said so clearly, lovely. When you want to talk, just unmute yourself, okay? Because she knows how to do it. Yeah, but. The whole yeah. picture come up cover the cover right. the screen. And because even if she's not touching the phone, any little noise is gonna bring it back to her screen because it, it changes oh, okay. on who's talking or movement. Okay. Right. Okay. So if I mute her, then it'll it'll stop that for until she unmutes herself to speak. So um in verse twenty two. So right now we're focusing on the will of God. So I told you this chapter, John 7, verse 1 to 39, has a lot of goodies in there to start getting us to pull ourselves out from the place that been deceived. So we're no longer deceived, okay? So that's where we're heading. So we read um, verse 18, and now verse 22, it says, But you work on the Sabbath too, 
when you obey Moses' law of circumcision, actually this tradition of circumcision began with the patriarchs long before the law of Moses. So when I read that verse, um, it's like saying like you're following the work of God, but just to follow the law, seeking glory for yourself, right? So it's like, it's like them doing, they're in the Sabbath, they're doing what they believe is the right things for the Sabbath. But when God himself, Christ, was doing the very things of God on the Sabbath, they called him the devil. The devil. They called him the devil. So again, this is them seeking from themselves or even looking at Moses as the God, really, and not really the God who is before them. So he's trying to paint a picture like, look, you do this on the Sabbath, you don't find a problem with it, which is really not a problem. But why are you seeing this as an issue? That's an issue. This is not an issue. This is the work the of God. Thing. And it's the same thing we're doing. Correct. <laughs> so where are you? We what? Go ahead. What you're doing this is what I'm doing. The same thing. No different. Exactly. <laughs> And that's what he said in verse 24. Look beneath the surface so you can judge correctly. Yes, sir. What do you mean? What do you mean when you're doing what you think is do you're doing right? Is it for the right purpose? Is it for the right reason? If, is it for the right intention? You're not- Self-interest. Self-interest. Right. Self-interest, that's all. Selfishness, self-interest. Then in verse 28, we're going to go a little further down. He said, while Jesus was teaching in the temple, he called out, yes, you know me and you know where I come from. That's and right. I like that verse because it's almost like him saying, it's almost like Oprah saying, yeah, I know you know me because I'm famous. You know my name. You've heard where I come from. Yeah, but it, that is even more more striking than that. Right. Go ahead. That is more striking because when Christ said, "You know me," Christ referred all the way back to the Old Testament, where prophecies has been published of His coming and how He's coming. In fact, when Aaron heard about the Christ born. He called the elders to find out where that Messiah is going to come. And they told him, according to the written in the old time, how the Messiah is going to come and where he's going to come. So when Christ said that, he referred back all the way to the Old Testament, all the way back, how they described him in coming. How we go? In fact, in the book of Daniel, he always he, he also proclaimed that they're going to kill him before time. So you see, he he he, he goes way back to those people who know exactly who he is, but they refuse to acknowledge it because of self interest. Well. I definitely agree with you with that, um, but I I, I I see it even even more so in um, the aspect where he's saying, because the verse continues and it says, but I'm not here on my own. That's right. The one who sent me is true and you That's don't know him. Okay, okay, okay. Um, a question we'll ask now. Why they don't know him? Right. Because they've been blind with self-interest. Mm -hmm. Self-interest is remember self-interest is a deceiver. Absolutely. Uh, when you deceive, when you think you deceive somebody, except what you are saying, which is so fit in the in the book. You think you defeat you you deceive somebody? Yes, 
But it's not well if somebody has to deceive. You are deceiving yourself. Right. Right. <laughs> you see, that's that's a very good point. You think you are deceiving somebody to get your way. Right. Unfortunately, is yourself you're deceiving. You're deceiving yourself. Um <laughs> that that part right there when he said you know me but in the one you that sent me you don't know him that's that's yeah. a, this is a very big contradiction because i want you guys to go back to when they prophesied about christ there was an illusion there was a there was a there was an idea of him that made them go look forward to it right mm -hmm. they were mm -hmm excited about what he was going to do because it was more about how he was going to come to their rescue rather than based on their understanding but not according to what he really was talking about no, no, they expected no. a king to come in and destroy everything and to just take the kingdom down and take his place they did not expect him to be born in a barn they didn't no. expect them to be no. somebody of humility. They didn't expect no. them to die. They didn't expect no. this was no. not supposed to happen. No. I deceive that, myself. That is, <laughs> it's a big mistake. But this is the mistake. They were expecting him to go take the kingdom of Rome. Right. To, to put Rome out of business. Correct. To go to Rome. Correct. They, to go to Rome because at that time, Rome was in power. And putting um, 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 the, the Jew under subjection. In fact, the governor of Judea was a Roman empire, and they didn't even have power to kill. They had to go to Pilate right. in order for them to kill because they were of subjection and they want a king to come and take them out of that situation. Go ahead, Tina. Did you have something to say? Say that again. No, Tina. <laughs> Actually, I was thinking of something when you said that. So I was thinking, uh, how about this? Is it really truly deception if really your expectations were a lot higher? Mm. So that's basically what you were saying was all that. We, we did expect him to come as this super being because you know we've been prophesying for him all, all this time. And come and save us and we're gonna have this utopia because he's here now and we don't have to worry about anything as they all promised and i'm just sitting here saying so if you romanticize if you had a higher expectation mm. and were then presented something absolutely maybe even the opposite of what you expected is it really deception or is it just i would like to believe like like I don't know how to say it for us humans what it really would be like I think I'm just gonna be disappointed how about that greatly disappointed because here I am thinking it could be it could be higher expectation but also it could be deception because uh Isaiah put it uh, when you go to the book of Isaiah he tell you exactly how humble you going to come amen the book of Isaiah already described it. How 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 low he going to come? He is not going to come as famous as they think they see. So therefore, a, 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 a higher expectation than that will bring them also back to deception, because you 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 are. The see the key is it's not so much that God is disappointing. Is that we who are narcissists, who are, what's the word, not narcissism, who have a created our own perspective of God. So the, the nature of human to be materialistic and to be, um, to have created such gaudy imagery. So we've, 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 we value things that God does. We're fabricating it. 
Right. Amen. So we created what we consider to be as I had this conversation with my kids about what we the whole point of gold and diamonds, which is just <laughs> rocks. So what is a rock to God? It's just a rock. Right. <laughs> so we make gold to be something amazing, which God created for whatever it's metal. It's not something worth that we make it out to be. So our perspective of it is what it is, makes it seem that we are disappointed by our own desire of our own expectations, which are small yeah. compared to God. But because we value it, we consider this to be what is high, not realizing, as I like to say, that this is the dump. So this is the garbage. So we make garbage seem great. And God is trying to save us from garbage. Uh, uh, um, to 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 back up what you just said um in this life we live in now in this life we live in now what is the highest thing the most valuable thing that we have we put in the highest 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 um, um highest bracket the most valuable thing we conceive now which is in the highest bracket that is our own life. Mm. Our own life is the highest we could go, is the highest expectation we could get. Right. Our own life. What God said. <laughs> what Christ said. If you lose your life. <laughs> if you keep your life for yourself, you're going to lose it. Yeah. If you value your life more than me, you going to lose. <laughs> If you value your, your very own life that you have more than me, you're going to lose it. Amen. Could you imagine the life which is more important than us? Because without living, you not exist. You not exist. I am not exist if I don't live. And God tell me I have to put it down in order for his um agenda to carry on that's because well that's the good point is you just made is that we value our life here without yeah. not realizing the life we're supposed to be valuing is there uh -huh. but then but then but then because that, that is real life this is not real but, life. but is, god listen yeah. to value the life which is up there you have to value him first. Amen. Right. Amen. When you value him, then you see there is a life, just as you just said before, the life we have here is just a, it's just something, it just, it's nothing to, it's so, nothing to. <laughs> so everything you guys are saying are exactly what is important we're not saying that the life here is not important and we're not saying that the life with god is 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 the only focus right i think what happened is we we missed the order of how we should live and if you seek the kingdom first then all these things will be added on to you the value of my life, meaning if I'm living, God is not going to tell me not to eat. God is not going to tell me not to bathe. God is not, that's not what he wants for me to live. No. Actually, he wants no. me to live a good life. I, you that's know, true. Very happy, clean, healthy, anything yes. that could, could be. Yes. But he doesn't want me to focus on my life so much so first and forget about really what the kingdom the preparation for the kingdom requires because yeah. the work was being done on the external on the on the flesh part and i forgot about the external the the internal that will focus on the eternal life that's why the expectation that's why my sister come up uh, tina come up with the expectation all expectation all expectation is so high for this life Right. For this, uh, whereby this life is only not even a shadow. 
not it hasn't begun yet. I think it hasn't begun yet. I I would say but, that the whole point of this life is to earn life. Because I like to I like to say that we haven't really started life. So <laughs> the point of living is to gain life. So what ma- what does this life matter? Your point here is to earn a right to live. Do mm-hmm. you deserve the right to live? Mm-hmm. And the, that is your choice. You are given all the opportunity to make your make your case that you get to live forever. Amen. Make your <laughs> case. How do we make our case? Oh wow! How do we make our case? Amen. So this this is what we're talking about. How yes. do we make our case? How do I? How do I allow God to say, oh, I know you. Come on in. Here's here's what we're laying right now before you. Here's all the things that Christ himself is telling you for me to know you. To down down your expectation about yourself. And to uplift the words that Christ has said. And to make that your focus. Because remember... You knowing God is not when you get to the kingdom. No, you no. knowing God or him knowing you happens no. right now in this no. moment. It's in the journey. It's in the walk. Amen. Amen. It's in the journey. It's in the walk. It's in how you're living. But then we are missing the mark because we're focusing on the things that are external, the things that prove to the world that we are walking the walk. And he can see the heart. He can see past what is true and what is not true. But um, um, before Christ, before Yeshua go, he left a, a guideline for us. He, he, before he went, he left a guideline for us. And that guideline will bring us to him. Mm-hmm. And this is the guideline he gave us. Love, you, Love one another. Amen. Love one another. It's that simple. Uh, what, what kind of love we have? Mm-hmm. Because there is love on earth. There is love in earth, but I may say that there are two kinds of love on earth. A true love and a fake love. I think that a fake love leads you to selfishness and distraction. And that's where the deception coming in. That's why the expectation coming in also. The high expectation of this life. Both of them come up in that fake love. I think the key to that word, to I mean, she's going to close. I'm just going to point out what you're saying and what Christ means when he says, I do not, I know you not, is you do not love. Love is love. Love is Christ is love. God knows love and love knows love. That's right. If you have love in your heart, God knows you. Amen. If you have love in your spirit, God knows you. Doesn't matter all the good you do. If you do mm-hmm. it without love, you do it for nothing. For nothing. If you do it a very little, you do it with love. God knows you. Amen. You have nothing in you, but you have love. God knows you. And God gives you grip to the same level of the feet the, the, the woman who had nothing but a penny. She did it, she gave all she had because of love and her love was greater than that servant who was with Christ who did not love that woman enough to even let him come close and that was a good proof of what she, what Gladia is pointing out here is a person who was with Christ who is shaming the woman for giving 50 cents because he has the love in his heart to even see the magnitude of this woman's love that she has nothing and she should be holding on to that 50 cents because it's about the expectation that we have that's well, the problem yeah it's the fabricated, it's that's the fabricated idea it's of what we think is supposed to be godly nature Amen. So god and knows love god knows what love looks like and he accepts the, the the lowest of the low and if we can't if you don't have love you can't accept those things right your love start at a very high standard your love start at the best of the best 
I don't take these puny little things. This is not enough for me. This is not, this is the, this is how we are, right? God instead, because here he is on his throne in the kingdom of heaven, comes down in a barn and was born in the most humble place that contradicts what man thinks to be king and to come and to reign and to take over. He already and has his kingdom. Go back to that same passage. In that same passage, John, they, they make a comment about Christ right there, which is deception. The deception they made there, they said, where that man get that learning? Well, 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 he's among us. How you get that kind of learning? He's saying things like this. He, he, he don't go to school. He don't have no learning. <laughs> and in fact, when you go deeper to the other passage of the scripture in the book of John, they say, okay, his son, his brothers is among us. Now he's making himself a big man talking high before us <laughs> in other words now they are disgracing right they are putting down right. in his place right. where he came from he don't come from nobody he don't come from no good family he don't come from any family of respect right. he don't come from any family of well educated right. person don't even have any education at all and now he's making himself better than us correct 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 now if he they had the love in them they won't do that you will not see it in that no place. no no what you would have seen you would have think about the word that he spoke is he, he, talking the word that come out of his mouth how truthful they are. We think about the word. We don't think about the person itself, but about the word that come out. And right now, one of my sister come and is speaking here. I am not talking about her. I'm talking about the truth that are coming out. These are the things I am focusing. I am focusing in the truth that come out, the word, the word. This is what is counting, not the face of the person, not the schooling of the person, not the, the, the family he born or she born, not the, we are talking about the quality of the world. This is where, where we concentrate in the world, Amen. the meaning of the world. So to conclude, I know it's after seven, um, oh, yeah. it's, it's, we could, we could go so much deeper into this and God has shown me so much from this one word because it's so profound and I never want anybody who is listening to this message to miss out on the moment that God is giving you to do right so that he knows you. So we're going to leave this. We're going to close in this verse in John 14, verse 15 to 17. And it says, if you love me, Aye. keep my commandments. Aye. And I will pray the Father. Aye. He shall give you another comforter that Aye. he may abide with you forever. Aye. Aye. Even the spirit of truth who the world cannot receive because Aye. you see of him not, neither knoweth him not, but ye know him, for he dwelleth with you and shall be in you. Is this Sister Eclipse? Yep. This is Sister Eclipse right now. The Holy Spirit is to teach you these things. It is in you. You know the truth. You know how to love. Deny yourself. Deny yourself over and over and over and over as many times as you need to. Because the oil that Seclady was talking about, that's the preparation we're talking about. Don't that's get fine. caught without it. Don't get caught without it. Don't be the one that he says, I knew you not. 
I don't know you. Don't be the one. Don't be the one. <laughs> you know the truth. It's in you. The Holy Spirit is given unto you. Don't deceive yourself by being of yourself. Hmm. Be of God. Thank you. Thank you. I don't know if Tina has something to say. Yeah, I'm so sorry. No, ma'am. I think you said it right. Amen. Mm -hmm. So, may the Spirit of God open mm -hmm. your eyes. The last place you want to be yes, is not yes. there in the kingdom with him. Mm -hmm. To think that you were doing everything on earth according to his will and you never was doing it to get into the kingdom. Don't be that one. He said it's a warning for all of us. Yes, sir. For all of us, for us to find out where are you? Are you just fabricating? Lord, Father God, we want to thank you for this word and this opportunity to bring an important message to not just everyone around us, but to our own self, Lord Father. Lord, Lord. For Lord, ourselves Lord. to reevaluate where we stand Lord, before Lord. you and what you call us to do and how you call us to live. Help That's us true. to deny ourselves and accept your love and to humble ourselves and to and to grab on to the love that you are so that it just magnifies within us so that the work that we do is not done in vain that we mm -hmm. find the right order of how to truly learn you so that you know us as well mm -hmm. that when that day comes we can enter the mm -hmm. kingdom with great joy mm -hmm. to hear mm -hmm. those words well done is mm. what we want thank you for even bringing this message and that warning yes, so that yes, we sir. don't end up there yes, sir. thank yes, you for sir. having love enough to yes. give give us this message to save us and if we weren't yes, preparing sir. ourselves before that we all can get things right and prepare ourselves now because if you're yes, still sir. if we're still alive that means there is still an opportunity there is still time. God, we love yes, you. We magnify your name. Yes. We pray not because we are worthy of anything, but we do pray in the precious, oh. precious name of Jesus. Amen. 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 Thank you, God. Amen. God bless. Thank you. God. Amen. 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 So uh, we thank everybody. Did you want to close? Thank everybody. We want to thank everybody for joining um, this week's um bible study session um as you guys know this is a live bible study if you weren't here live you weren't able to ask questions mm -hmm. on the air but you can still leave your comments in the, the comment section whether you're watching on facebook or on youtube even on our podcast the message is all over write your comments tell us how you feel so that we can have a conversation together and work the things that god has already placed in you Thank you for spending the time with us. Until next week at 5 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, we hope you have a great week and stay safe. Until then, have a blessed one, everyone. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye-bye.